Today is August the 3rd. Today, Jeremiah tells Israel the covenant also brings a curse. In reading through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Jeremiah chapters 9 through 12. Um, Jeremiah in chapter 11 hones in on the covenant. Uh, in verse 2, he says, Remind the people of Judah and Jerusalem about the terms of my covenant with them. Say to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel said, Cursed is anyone who does not obey the terms of my covenant. Then later in verses 6 to 8, he again says, uh, the covenant can bring a curse. He finishes that section in verse 8 saying, because they refuse to obey, I brought upon them all the curses described in this covenant. Do you remember when the Lord gave Israel the covenant? He had the people divide into six tribes standing on Mount Ebal, six tribes standing on Mount Gerizim. Six of the tribes pronounced blessings. If you obey the terms of this covenant, here are the blessings God will give you. And then the other tribes said, if you disobey, here are the curses that God will bring on you. Jeremiah says, it's time for the curses. Enjoy today as you read Jeremiah 9 through 12. Jeremiah 9 to 12, New Living Translation, Jeremiah 9. If only my head were a pool of water, my eyes a fountain of tears, I'd weep day and night for all my people who've been slaughtered. Oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's shack in the desert, for they are all adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse, and they don't know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother, for brother takes advantage of brother. A friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. See, I'll melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? I will weep for the mountains and wail for the wilderness pastures, for they're desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. I'll make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It'll be a place haunted by jackals, the towns of Judah, will be ghost towns with no one living in them. Who's wise enough to understand all of this? Who's been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They've refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed their own desires and worshipped the images of Baal as their ancestors taught them. So now, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Look, I'll feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I'll scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of. And even there, I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Consider all this and call for the mourners. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Quick, begin your weeping. Let the tears flow from your eyes. 
Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. We're ruined. We're completely humiliated. We must leave our land because our homes have been torn down. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what he has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Teach one another how to lament, for death has crept in through our windows and entered our mansions. It's killed off the flower of our youth. Children no longer play in the streets, and young men no longer gather in the squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields like clumps of manure, like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. Those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love, who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. A time is coming, says the Lord, when I'll punish all those who are circumcised in body, but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, the people who live in the desert and remote places, yes, even the people of Judah. And like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised hearts. Jeremiah 10 Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O Israel. This is what the Lord says. Don't act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Don't be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. Their gods are like hapless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak. They need to be carried because they cannot walk. Don't be afraid of such gods, for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O king of nations? That title belongs to you alone among all the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world. There is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things they worship are made of wood. They've beaten sheets of silver from Tarshish and gold from Euphaz. They give these materials to skillful craftsmen who make their idols. Then they dress these gods in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But the Lord is the only true God. He's the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at his anger. Nations cannot stand up to his wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods who didn't make the heavens and earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. But the Lord made the earth by his power and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They're ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He's the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of Heaven's armies is his name. Pack your bags and prepare to leave. The siege is about to begin. For this is what the Lord says, Suddenly I will fling out all of you who live in this land. I'll pour great troubles upon you, and at last you will feel my anger. My wound is severe and my grief is great. My sickness is incurable, but I must bear it. My home is gone. No one is left to help me rebuild it. My children have been taken away, and I will never see them again. 
The shepherds of my people have lost their senses. They no longer seek wisdom from the Lord. Therefore, they fail completely and their flocks are scattered. Listen, hear the terrifying roar of great armies as they roll down from the north. The towns of Judah will be destroyed and become a haunt for jackals. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We're not able to plan our own course. So correct me, Lord, but please be gentle. Don't correct me in anger, for I would die. Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on the peoples that do not call upon your name. For they've devoured your people, Israel. They've devoured and consumed them, making the land a desolate wilderness. Jeremiah 11. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Remind the people of Judah and Jerusalem about the terms of my covenant with them. Say to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Cursed is anyone who does not obey the terms of my covenant. For I said to your ancestors when I brought them out of the iron-smelting furnace of Egypt, If you obey me and do whatever I command you, then you will be my people and I will be your God. I said this so I could keep my promise to your ancestors to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you live in today. Then I replied, Amen, Lord. May it be so. Then the Lord said, Broadcast this message in the streets of Jerusalem. Go from town to town throughout the land and say, Remember the ancient covenant and do everything it requires. For I solemnly warned your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, Obey me. I have repeated this warning over and over to this day. But your ancestors did not listen or even pay attention. Instead, they stubbornly followed their own evil desires. And because they refused to obey, I brought upon them all the curses described in this covenant. Again, the Lord spoke to me and said, I've discovered a conspiracy against me among the people of Judah and Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors. They've refused to listen to me and are worshiping other gods. Israel and Judah have both broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, This is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring calamity upon them, and they will not escape. Though they beg for mercy, I will not listen to their cries. Then the people of Judah and Jerusalem will pray to their idols and burn incense before them. But the idols will not save them when disaster strikes. Look now, people of Judah. You have as many gods as you have towns. You have as many altars of shame. Altars for burning incest to your god Baal, as there are streets in Jerusalem. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Don't weep or pray for them, for I will not listen to them when they cry out to me in distress. What right do my beloved people have to come to my temple when they've done so many immoral things? Can their vows and sacrifices prevent their destruction? They actually rejoice in doing evil. I, the Lord, once called them a thriving olive tree, beautiful to see and full of good fruit. But now I've sent the fury of their enemies to burn them with fire, leaving them charred and broken. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, who planted this olive tree, have ordered it destroyed. For the people of Israel and Judah have done evil, arousing my anger by burning incense to Baal. Then the Lord told me about the plots my enemies were making against me. I was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. I had no idea they were planning to kill me. Let's destroy this man and all his words, they said. Let's cut him down so his name will be forgotten forever. O Lord of heaven's armies, you make righteous judgments and you examine the deepest thoughts and secrets. Let me see your vengeance against them for I've committed my cause to you. This is what the Lord says about the men of Anathoth, who wanted me dead. They had said, We will kill you if you don't stop prophesying in the Lord's name. So this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says about them. I'll punish them. Their young men will die in battle, and their boys and girls will starve to death. Not one of these plotters from Anathoth will survive, for I will bring disaster upon them when their time of punishment 
comes. Jeremiah 12. Lord, you always give me justice when I bring a case before you, so let me bring you this complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are evil people so happy? You've planted them, and they've taken root and prospered. Your name is on their lips, but you are far from their hearts. But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and test my thoughts. Drag these people away like sheep to be butchered. Set them aside to be slaughtered. How long must this land mourn? Even the grass in the fields is withered. The wild animals and birds have disappeared because of the evil in the land. For the people have said, The Lord doesn't see what's ahead for us. If racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? Even your brothers, members of your own family, have turned against you. They plot and raise complaints against you. Don't trust them, no matter how pleasantly they speak. I've abandoned my people, my special possession. I've surrendered my dearest ones to their enemies. My chosen people have roared at me like a lion of the forest, so I've treated them with contempt. My chosen people act like speckled vultures, but they themselves are surrounded by vultures. Bring on the wild animals to pick their corpses clean. Many rulers have ravaged my vineyard, trampling down the vines and turning all its beauty into a barren wilderness. They have made it an empty wasteland. I hear its mournful cry. The whole land is desolate, and no one even cares. On all the bare hilltops, destroying armies can be seen. The sword of the Lord devours people from one end of the nation to the other. No one will escape. My people have planted wheat but are harvesting thorns. They've worn themselves out, but it's done them no good. They'll harvest a crop of shame because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Now this is what the Lord says. I'll uproot from their land all the evil nations reaching out for the possession I gave my people Israel. I'll uproot Judah from among them. But afterward, I'll return and have compassion on all of them. I'll bring them home to their own lands again, each nation to its own possession. And if these nations truly learn the ways of my people, if they learn to swear by my name, saying, As surely as the Lord lives, just as they taught my people to swear by the name of Baal, then they'll be given a place among my people. But any nation who refuses to obey me will be uprooted and destroyed. I, the Lord, have spoken. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see Jeremiah's dirty underwear.